In this video, I'll be walking through how to build this locking trunk drawer. Check it out. All right, first step is to cut down the plywood. I'm using three quarter inch Baltic birch hardwood plywood. Uh, use my track saw for that. Uh, finished cutting the final dimensions with my table saw and miter saw. Table saw was convenient in this build because I needed everything at the exact same width for the box and then as well as the drawers later on. So helpful there, stacking the sides so they're the exact, exact same. Cutting them at the same time was really helpful. So got everything broken down to the appropriate sizes and then going to use some pocket hole joinery to get it all together. I paused here and did a stain sample for the customer. I do this on most of my custom projects, but just wanted to make sure that they had the exact color they wanted. This is going into an SUV and the SUV had some wood trim already. So we tried to match that as close as we could. Make sure when you're doing your stain, you're mixing it up as much as you would when you would do the entire final project. So the actual color looks the same. I went ahead and did a gloss coat after this. Uh, these are the handles that will be on the front of the drawer. So let the customer pick from those. And this is what the carcass or outside of the box looks like uh, that will house the drawer. You can see a little overhang there. This is just clamped together. I uh, got the help of my wife to flip it over because this thing is definitely heavy. I glued and screwed the bottom in first. So this is the bottom being attached to the back and sides. I did this because I figured the actual drawer would be easier to install without the top on as well as bolting it to the inside of the vehicle. So like I said, this is going in the trunk of an SUV and wanted to make sure that was easy to install. Um, here's a quick template I made uh, for the handles. The handles are recessed in to the front of the drawer. So wanted to make sure I had something repeatable for my router. And we'll get back to that uh, later. So the customer had stopped by and we did a test fit in the trunk of their SUV. And I'm glad we did because it wound up being too long. Whenever we measured, I, I didn't have the back seats back all the way and I actually pushed the box up a little bit so they of course want to have their seats all the way back if they want the back row of their seats so just trimming off an inch here and I have the top and bottom laid together so I'm cutting them as one piece using the track saw here I just clamped my little workbench and then I'm over there at the miter saw trimming the side pieces and the back uh, or not the back but the side pieces uh, down one inch as well there goes my wife uh, putting away the track saw and get everything cleaned up a little bit and we will then reassemble everything. This will be the actual glue up. So you're gonna see me use a lot of clamps, a lot of um, right angle supports. These are just a, this is just a tight bond wood glue, uh, some Pony Jorgensen clamps, and I'm using these 90 degree, it's actually just a speed square, they're like two or $3, those metal pieces in the corner there and actually clamping those down. So when I do glue it and screw it together, it's at a perfect 90 degrees. This is super important since it's a box and there's a drawer going inside the box. If this part is not square, your box, your drawer will not slide in and out easily or properly. Next up is to measure for the actual drawer. So you see the drawer slides in there on either side on the right and left and I'm taking the measurements just of the space in between there. So now we have the drawer slide thickness accounted for. You wanna make sure this is a really accurate measurement so the drawer is not too tight and binding, but also not too loose and slip around. So set that off to the side and now I'm gonna to begin to break down the rest of the plywood with the track saw to make the actual drawer. So same concept, same steps as before for the outside of the box. This is just gonna be the inside and I'm gonna be using uh, pocket holes. Actually didn't use pocket holes on the outside, just glue and screw right through the bottom and top since it'll be covered up. But for the actual drawer, I'll use pocket holes that you will not see either. Pocket holes will make this really strong and easy to put together. 
and it definitely will last for a very long time. So again, using the track saw, you see me using squares, all the clamps, uh, definitely want to make sure this is perfect. So lots of measuring and remeasuring and making sure I get this thing just right. Again, using three quarter inch plywood. This is a red oak or Baltic birch plywood. Um, I used a, a mix in this one actually. So you won't be able to see any of it uh, except the front. Uh, everything else is gonna be covered in a black cloth or a black uh, carpet to match the inside of the vehicle. So always testing before I, I cut the actual piece. You can see me there real quick. I, I tested to make sure the measurement was even right with my fence there since it's not the best table saw in the world it's just a contractor saw but uh, it works you can see i'm making a, a giant sawdust mess i'm sanding over the edges just a little bit to make sure there's no tear out and i'm not getting any kind of splinters and nothing pokes through the carpet once i once i add that i'm happy to answer any questions that you have uh, just leave a comment i'm pretty quick in responding to those uh, any kind of tools I use or techniques or anything of that sort. If you're not already, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I pause every so often to clean up the sawdust. Uh, garage floor is pretty slippery when when it gets sawdust all over it. So definitely don't want to slip. Uh, you can see me here <laughs> marking out. I thought I was going to do dados for the bottom of the drawer. And then I quickly realized that this would have made the actual volume or capacity of the drawer pretty small. So here I am still, I did a test run uh, with a three quarter inch bit to dado out a slot for the bottom of the drawer. But like I said, I, I nixed that idea and wound up just going with pocket holes. Uh, I figured that would be uh, just as strong, but it would allow uh, significantly more volume or space inside the drawer to accommodate more things. So this particular customer has uh, some valuables that they carry frequently in their vehicle. They're going to lock them up in here and, and they don't want anyone to even know they're there. So the drawer has to be really strong. It's a really big drawer. Uh, as you can see here, uh, if you look closely, the drawer is inside the carcass. There's no lid, obviously, but this thing's enormous. I'm using super heavy duty drawer slides uh, on this to, to make sure it is sturdy. Uh, and here we go, staining the front um, and the sides. Uh, these are actually the sides we're looking at now, but uh, then I let that dry. I actually did a little stencil action here for this customer, uh, former military. Thank you so much for your service and a little American flag there. And you'll see more on this later. Next is to do the lock. So that was some spray glue on a piece of paper. And this locking me mechanism is a commercial grade, uh, pretty, pretty intense lock. This is the most expensive part of the project in terms of materials. You can see I'm using the drill press. I'm just following this pattern that came with the lock. Uh, it's a piece of paper and it tells you exactly what size bit to use and where to drill it out. I recommend drilling out the smallest holes first. And here we are with the router template that I had made, um, sort of just hogging out the slot for the handles here. You can see me remove it a couple times. This is a scrap piece that I'm testing with. I always test everything on scrap first because I don't want to get into a project and ruin it because I didn't think something through. So template did work really nicely. Uh, I got the depth I needed after trial and error. Um, and you can see me routing in the slot for the two handles here. These handles uh, I just found on Amazon, and they're really cool. They're spring-loaded, so they're not going to be bouncing around inside the car making a bunch of noise or anything like that. But uh, just go slow when you do something like this. My router uh, could use a bigger base for that probably, but uh, just make sure you're careful. And then we go stain. So here I am staining. This is the actual front. Uh, it's got the holes for the locking mechanism as well as the handles. Uh, clean everything up here. And now it's time to assemble the actual drawer. So you can see my pocket holes in there. Uh, won't bore you with that. There's plenty of examples in my other videos on how to drill pocket holes. Uh, Craig has a, a template form on their website to show how to use that. So there you go. Sneak peek at the stencil on the side there. You can see a gloss finish. And we're adding all three sides here. So 
these pocket holes are, are going to be plenty sturdy if you're paranoid or whatnot you can throw some glue in there if you really wanted and add more screws but this is going to be plenty strong for multiple day multiple times per day use um, actually, I actually had to get out the, the big Bessie clamps here. These are some parallel clamps. And if you didn't know, if you have these Pony Jorgensen clamps, they link together. So if you have two of the same duty, these are medium duty clamps, they link together to create an even longer clamp. Pretty sure Bessie and Irwin and a couple other guys offer that as well. So here I am installing the actual drawer slides. Uh, I like to put the part that is stationary inside the box first and then attach to the actual drawer. And again, I did this, I intentionally left the lid off because I knew this part would be much easier without a lid rather than reaching my hands in there and uh, sort of drilling blindly. But uh, definitely went overkill on the screws. Like I said, this is a, a heavy box as it is and there's going to be some heavy equipment in there so i want to make sure it's super sturdy uh, overkill is definitely underrated but uh, here i am attaching the actual drawer to the slides uh, just pulling it out a little bit so that reveals the different slots i used a eighth inch piece of plywood uh, as a spacer you can see there they're kind of falling all over the place but this allowed a nice little gap so the drawer slid smoothly See those holes there I pre-drilled? Those are the slots for the bolts that will mount this to the actual vehicle. Uh, next up is to install the front. Um, this drawer front will be spaced out here. You can see I'm using some business cards. Uh, just make sure you have the same amount of business cards. Some people use playing cards. As long as you have the some way to make the gap the same on each side, that's all that matters. So. You don't want it completely flush or it'll grab it and, and mess something up. It'll break the wood. This is just wood, so uh, keep that in mind. And I just scrolled, drilled straight through where my handles will go and then attached it from the back with screws. So next up is to drill through the holes. This is for the locking mechanism through the actual drawer there, now that the drawer front is attached. And then coming back to the actual drawer handles. Uh, I think there's like nine or 10 screws on each of these handles. So like I said, this is going to be used probably every single day. So I want to make sure you're, I'm using something that is going to, going to last. And we have the locking mechanism installed and I'm going to add the lid now. Uh, I did route out a slot, um, use a chisel on the top for the locking mechanism. The actual lock, like I said, is super heavy duty. It comes with a steel uh, sort of kick plate or striker plate that made this really smooth. The instructions came with it as well, were really clear and helpful, um, but happy to answer any questions around that locking mechanism as well. So as you can see, it works great. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, next up is to add carpet. Uh, there's gonna be carpet on the inside and outside of the box uh, to protect uh, the stuff inside and make the actual box blend in with their trunk. So if someone were to peer on the back window and there's nothing on top of it, you really wouldn't even notice that this box is inside. So, But this is the last step. I'm using an X-Acto knife and the track saw track with a straight edge cutting it down and using spray glue uh got the carpet on the inside of the drawer and the outside and here she is Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you liked or didn't like and subscribe and God bless.